love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support this show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Murder, what up, man? Killer was good, man. Did you see the game? Yeah, of course I seen the game, man. I'm <laughs> mad I wasn't there. I'm I'm pissed off about. Let me fix this. I know it's a glare. That's yeah. better nick on the glare. Let me fix that. Sorry about that. Yeah, man. I'm so, I'm, I'm so, apologize to the fans in Cleveland. Everybody who thought I was coming had a little setback, but I do apologize. But it was sensational, man. It was a great weekend of women's basketball, man. Yeah, it was a very, very great week of basketball. Some hating going on, but we're going to get into it. Mm, I sense mm. a lot of hating. I ain't going to lie. I did. Right, I don't well, want to call it all hating, but yeah, there definitely was some, some hating right, well, let's, going on. Let's get into it then, man. Yeah, <laughs> definitely want to know your thoughts on that. But first and foremost, we're just going to start with the game overall. So South Carolina defeated Iowa 87-75. What did you guys think of the game, and what did you think would have been a better story? Caitlin Clark winning the national championship or South Carolina remaining undefeated? Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I think as them as South Carolina going undefeated is a great story. You know, to me, it seemed like it's the beginning of a dynasty down there in South Carolina. Shout out to Don Staley and that whole team. And even the freshmen, her, her freshmen are phenomenal, yo. It made me, it made it gave me the feeling like they were actually able to do something that the Fab Five was supposed to do. So I mean, there's a there's a lot to take from this game. Um and I don't want to be too long winded because I want to come back with some more points, but just just looking at the game and looking at what Caitlin Clark was able to do, she got a regular 30. But if you was asking me what would have been a better story, it probably would have been a craziest story for everything else that she was doing historically this year to leave out with a championship. But, I mean, I didn't expect her to beat all of them by herself, but I did. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, like I wouldn't have put it past her if she was able to pull it off. Pause. It wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been a surprise to me. A better story for white people is Caitlin Clark. A better story for black people is Dan Staley. Pardon me. Don Staley, oh, yeah. Don Staley, pardon me. The better story for black people. Look, I I, I cheered for um <clears throat> pardon me. I cheered for Iowa all the way until last night. I want to see Caitlin Clark do everything. It was yeah. amazing. I want I was rooting for it because I like watching greatness. So I rooted for Caitlin Clark until last night. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be straight up honest. I said, enough's enough. This white care this white girl can't run through the bracket like this. It's just it's now it's just getting ridiculous at this yeah. point. <laughs> just me personally as a black former black <laughs> athlete. <laughs> and no disrespect <laughs> anything, whatever. As a former black black athlete, the buck had to stop last night. I ain't yeah. gonna hold you, my nigga. I was sitting there like I, I rooted for this girl from the beginning of the season, middle of the season, end of the season, uh the end the beginning of the tournament. And then when she made it to the championship, I said, nah, because it's black on white crown, white on black crown, however you want to put it. See, her against Paige in yeah. Connecticut, that was white on white crown. Yeah. So I'm like, if I'm going to pick a white on white crown situation, I'm going with Caitlyn. Yeah. I like Caitlyn's attitude, but it's sort of like when you watch Family Feud, you, even if you don't know the black family, you root for them. <laughs> Even if they say something stupid, you just go for if you black, you go for the black family. If you look at this game, the starting lineups, there's four black girls on South Carolina and one white girl. 
and on Iowa, it's four white girls and one black girl. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. The difference in the game, honestly, though, is that the depth, is that you see the depth that South Carolina had, man. It, it, it's just, they played nine players, a lot of minutes, too. The lowest person, one person didn't play. The other four people off the bench, lowest 14 minutes, 18 minutes, significant amount of minutes, um, just put in pressure. And they outscored them 37 to zero. That matters. That yeah. matters when you got that kind of depth. And Dawn Staley really was like, she got two starting fouls. She trusts everybody at any given moment. So it goes to speak to the Delta South, South Carolina. But to answer the question, Stat, it depends on who you asking because – as yeah. a black man, I'm going to go with the black story. As a white person, this is what I will say. America, America, if you wasn't around for Larry Bird, younger American, this is y'all Larry Bird. Dirk, Dirk Nowinski don't count. The Joker don't count. Luca don't count. You have a homegrown American white athlete that's a superstar. It's been a lot of white athletes since Larry Bird, but yeah. none of them been American. Yeah. Dirk Nowinski, it don't matter who it is. They wasn't American. And America been starving for a superstar white athlete for years. And to be honest with you, I haven't seen anything like it since Larry Bird. So um, without since all the Larry racial Larry Bird shit, killer? Hold on real quick, man. I'm going to get back to that because I want to put my disclaimer real quick. I don't mean them. I don't want this to sound racial, what I'm saying, or like I'm discriminating. I've been rooting for Caitlin Clark, but us as black people know the truth. What's on the inside? Pause. You're not going to go against the blacks. Like if you looked at that stadium, it was literally black against white. It was black people over here and it was white people over here. It almost reminded me, and I know Stat probably didn't see it. She's a little too young. A Harlem Knights mur murder when the black nigga went to fight at Harlem Knights and the white people jumped up when the white nigga did something. And the black people jumped up when the black nigga did something. It was that type of vibe, man. So um, I'm just being honest, but Caitlin Clark's amazing talent. Not only that, she lived up to the hype. There's been a lot of pressure on this girl. I'm not going to sit here and say from the beginning of the season, even though it has, but midway during this season, you got to beat that. She's, she's, what, 100 points away from breaking this record. Oh, you're 10 yeah. assists from breaking that record. Oh, you could lead the yeah. school NCAA and score completely, completely. Oh, you may lead the NCAA tourney in points completely. It's a lot to, for her to carry, and mm -hmm. she lived up to every single moment. Like I said, there wasn't much more she could do. You go out on your shield scoring 30, to be totally honest with you, and no disrespect to the rest of the team, for her to get here is crazy. For her to get here with that team is crazy, man. So salute yeah. to Caitlin Clark and the rest of the team in Iowa. But yeah, Murder, um, talk, let's talk about it. Who's a white superstar since Larry Bird? Mm. American. That's what I'm thinking, because a lot of times you, you you look at some and then when you do the background, you're like, they're not yeah, from America. You yeah, know? yeah, you think yeah. about it. That's what I'm saying. When you sit here and really think about it, basketball-wise, I'm not going to put baseball in anything else. I'm talking about basketball. And a white American superstar has not been here to this hype or potential yeah. since Larry Bird, when, if you really sit there and do the math. And I... And I ain't really even ready to argue about it. I would like to, for you to tell me somebody who's even <laughs> close to you. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought about this, but not even with Caitlin Clark. Just over the years, how much America would love a white superstar that is from America. It would be, it would go crazy, bro. If niggas had, right, if niggas had an Ant Man, uh, a Trey Young, uh, who else? Somebody said a John Morant, uh, a Luca. Uh, a, a SGA, a, a, a Joker. Yeah. Do you know how much their success would be heightened because they're from American white? You know, I named black players too. Yeah. I'm just saying, any of them super, you know, on the on the rise superstars. I'm saying all stars with potential superstar um, assets if they're not already a superstar. Do you know exactly how much 
more their celebrity would be celebrated being that they're from America. And not only that, Caitlin Clark from Middle America. She from Eminem land. So when you're from Middle America, they yeah. love you because Middle America feels like that's the last of America when it comes to white people. Yeah, she's this actually the, you know from, what I'm saying? She's, she's actually from that from that right. lifestyle. Exactly. And I, I think I think when it was all said and done, Don Staley then was looking at it week after week and said, "We're gonna put an end to this." Now uh, that would have been my whole theme of what I've been saying in the in the locker room. Tonight mm-hmm. that ends. It ends mm-hmm. with us. Yeah, maybe exactly. they wasn't they wasn't they wasn't bold enough or forward enough or aggressive enough to get this done. But tonight we're gonna stop all that Kaylin Clark stuff. And, yeah, I, and, and then sorry, it seemed like that's what they went out to do. I mean, but she had a gang load of points, man. When you think about it, for her to finish with 3951 for a career, that's so that's almost four that's right there, four thousand points. That means she's been killing the all, all her years. And it, it's not like it just started this year. So that's a hell of a um uh, a career to have down there in Iowa. And I think Dawn Staley echoed that when she kept saying she she lifted the sport, but then she started saying she's gonna lift the WNBA up. So I I don't know. We we're gonna have to get into that a little later. Yeah, man. Big shot to, to Caitlin, but yeah. It, look, when you when you're coaching, you don't wanna look ahead of teams. And you don't want to say we're going to beat them, beat them. But I, I agree that that was circled on the calendar. But not only that, what you got to realize is this was a revenge game for South Carolina. Yeah. Because last year, because Caitlin sent them home last year in the mm-hmm. semifinals. So Don Stanley, this isn't, wasn't just about South Carolina against Iowa. This was about Don Staley. Don, pardon me. I don't know why I keep mispronouncing that name. Don Staley against Caitlin Clark and her coach as well, because she's like, yeah, I got a whole new group of bitches, pardon my language, whole new group of females, and we ready to get crazy. Nigga, what's good? A whole new staff. Because it was even dope to see the girl, I'm so mad I can't think of her name, who graduated from South Carolina last year, who was hosting on ESPN during the game um, with the rest of the girls, but she was the number one pick, I believe, last year out of South Carolina. And even before... She started doing an interview um, post game to see her tears, to see her joy, to see her emotion, because it was like good. I I wasn't a part of it, but I'm here from when my young girls got y'all. Yeah, I'm with all that. And then, uh, ironically, they're probably going to be teammates. So many I can't think of the girl's name, but you know that she plays for the team. Oh yeah, Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, because she's on the Indiana Fever, and which is right. also she- the first pick for the WNBA draft. Yeah. Right, exactly. I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say how how she ironic gonna be is that. Friends. She gonna be friends yeah. with Caitlyn next year, right? But also, you know, while we're still on this, I watched a lot of commentary over the weekend because uh, it wasn't just last night. Even uh, Friday's night game where UConn was a thriller it was a great game. Um, you know, yeah. Um, uh, South Carolina got North Carolina State out of here fairly. Quick. Easily, but I was watching Diana Taurasi and they was talking about, um, you know, they're all UConn players that was kind of talking. And when they beat UConn, they was giving Caitlin mad praise and everything else. And, you know, he's a little point disappointed that Utah, Utah, pardon me, UConn lost. But they asked, I remember Scott, Scott Van Pelp said, is there any word that you want to use um, Diana Taurasi, that is. And I don't know if our fans are familiar with Diana Taurasi, but she's a monster. She, yeah. she went to UConn and got busy and gets busy in the WNBA. When they asked them, what do you have for the young girls coming into the WNBA? She looked at the camera and said, reality. And she said, there's levels to this. She said, I'm not saying Caitlin's game or anybody else's game won't translate in the WNBA, but it's it's a it's it's a course. It doesn't happen that easily. And our exact words, it's levels to this. So he said reality. And the great thing about this is that we don't even have to wait that long. The WNBA yeah, season this is probably a like few, this is like two, three months. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna see about all that early. 
But as far as what you said, murder, to make my last point, is that when Dawn said that Caitlin's going to lift the WNBA Yeah, more, she said that. I've seen it. He's 100% right, because what's going on is this. This girl is getting NBA uh, postseason views. She's getting playoff views on a women's college game, which has never happened before. Mm -hmm. So therefore, now television is looking like, oh, she could draw this many millions. She could draw this many millions. And I don't know exactly how the contracts work in the WNBA. Maybe I'll do some due diligence on it this week. But if she's dictating how much the WNBA army can make on television games because she's going to be playing, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. We got we to gotta figure out the budget for me because if I'm Caitlin... The big three is waiting for me. Yeah, Why five million dollars. Five, five million, million dollars to go play for Ice Cube. Yeah, five M and M's is waiting for me. So why would I sit here and take a hundred thousand? I know I got my endorsements where I'm gonna make five million anyway. But five plus five equal ten. So I'm not. I'm, I don't understand how this is gonna work moving forward. And the reason Don Stanley said that is because. Next year, the WNBA's contract is up with these TV deals, and they have to renegotiate. And if you got Caitlin Clark in the WNBA, that's a big deal because odds are going to be on her. I don't know how her, her staff, her parents, whoever, her agent runs her business, but this is the time to start figuring out the cheat code. I don't know how yeah. it's going to work because I don't have to be here. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Ice Cube will need security if he get on a big three. <laughs> Cause he'll be messing up a lot of money. He'll be messing up a lot of money with her going to the big three. Can you imagine like the day that she signed with the big three? What what it'll be like for television? Cause they're all banking on her to show up with the number one pick, you know? So if she doesn't show up. This, that could be a, a new wrinkle in the whole system. Exactly what you're saying. So this, this is going to be really interesting. Very and interesting. This is the time where she she needs a, a definitely a good a good agent. She need a good agent. She might need Michael Jordan agent. She needs somebody. Where's Rich Paul at, man? Rich Paul need to be snatching up, man. Yeah, I'm both surprised he's not on it. Yeah, he got, he got you know, you know, he got Juju Watkins, so I gotta talk to him about it. Yeah, Juju Watkins ain't, ain't Kaylin, but I, I, I feel you. She could be, she could be, she could be. Let me not put my foot in my mouth. I'm about to say, Juju, Juju Watkins got another three years. She, she was actually second leading the women's in scoring this year. Gino Ariyama told her to get out of here now. He said, We, we don't yeah. need you around here. Fucking of UConn shit every year. <laughs> Get on out of here. He told her to leave early. So yeah. uh, she's not Caitlin now, but she definitely has potential. So also adding to this conversation, because this does lead to deeper conversations, right? So Caitlin Clark will be leaving college without a title. Do you guys believe she needed one to really become considered the GOAT of college basketball? Absolutely not. She had three thousand and she had three thousand nine hundred and fifty one points. I mean, and she's always shown up on the grand stage. This is what one of the things that I really like about her is that she's she's never really not showed up. You know how with most players that that have a storybook career, they end up going out on one of those games where they didn't perform as well. She even ended with 30 points against a super stacked South Carolina team. I mean, and she was wearing my number stat. What you want me to say? Greatness comes from that number. Me, Clyde Drexler, Caitlin Clark, and the list goes on. I, I, I can't even, I'm not even going to get into this with Cam. I see him turning his face. Jim Jackson, Michael Red. You know, in the list, Mace, and the list goes on. <laughs> I was expecting it in my number. I may have left something in the number, you know, pause. Bunch of niggas who ain't win nothing. Everybody you name. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> all fell That's short. That's true, too. That's true, too. All niggas got right there. They got right there. You right, too. Clyde, Clyde won. He Clyde won. Dr- yeah, Drake's the yeah, one, he, but he, Jim he, Jackson, he, Michael Ray. Clyde, though, Clyde ain't get his. Clyde ain't get his in. In Portland, though, he cheated and went man down to Houston for a minute. <laughs> oh, look, to me, I, I look, I agree, man. I ain't counting no championship to make her to go. She didn't have the, the weapons on her team. Look, yeah, look, I'm not gassing it, man. I, I do not know how she got to the championship, man. I really don't know. I really I know I did that. And Mace makes a great point. She didn't shy away from the moment, man. Didn't, didn't shy moment. away, you know. And That's then killer, and killer. It was a lot of niggas who came pause through the division one for her to even pass niggas on the on the God side. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Look, like I said, stepping up to the plate when it matters matters, man. You know, I was watching um, I was watching some clips over the weekend, and LeBron was talking about how it was his fault. Um, against the Dallas Mavericks series in the championship because he couldn't get it done. And he was having four points in the fourth, two points in the fourth, eighth in the fourth. And he took accountability. He sure did. But fourth quarter in the championship elimination games or we, when you got niggas back, against, you don't go nowhere. And she never went anywhere. Even when she passed the ball, it was more, it was the right thing to do, but it was almost the right thing to do on the second note, because you see somebody open, you pass the ball, in, but you got to think when you're in this mindset, when you're on your best player on the team and you know your personnel, you're like, okay, she's open, but I got a one-on-one. Damn, here come the double team. Let me do the right basketball play and pass it. And she was doing that because at the end of the day, you can't beat double and triple teams all game. It's just not going to happen. It's not. Mm-hmm. So... Um, to answer the question, nah, she don't need no championship to be the GOAT. That girl the GOAT, man. That girl the GOAT. She did it with all the pressure on her, man. Yeah, and her, her supporting cast was not, I mean, that was a miracle. The Everything yeah. she was doing was was miraculous with that team. Yes. See, for her, um, obviously, at the end of the game, she was super, super emotional because a lot of the WNBA players who got multiple college championships, like, they feel like she does need it to solidify her status. So I could see that kind of being like, like, I wonder if the- It was all the Connecticut players. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they were saying, and that's what I was telling you. They, They were saying on that play- I don't know why, you know, Gino didn't come back and, and challenge it, but that's that's what all that is about. They wanted no, UConn no. to win. Well, listen, even if, and just so the viewers that know what we're talking about, we're referring to the game on Friday when Iowa was playing UConn, and they called an off-the-ball foul on uh, UConn with probably about four seconds left, something like that. But the thing about it is, I was up one. Caitlin Clark gets fouled with three seconds left. After that call, I think that was a terrible call. After that call, they she goes to the foul line, makes the first one, misses the second one with three seconds, a little over three seconds, and UConn doesn't get the rebound. You get the rebound, call timeout, you have another chance. So that was UConn's fault. I'm feeling them on the call, but if you don't secure the defensive rebound, it wasn't meant for you. Yeah, the moment was too big for them. Pause. That's what it was. Heard you there. Okay. And then Cam spoke about it a little bit earlier, but Diana Taurasi said reality is coming to the players entering the draft. I'm just curious, how do you guys feel like the college players? Because I feel like the college players are independent stars, which is why, you know, we follow them more because they have a story. They make themselves more marketable. Do you guys think that people will follow these players to the WNBA or do you think it's going to be a struggle? Curious how you guys think the future will be. Um, First of all, I'll, I'll say yes yeah for Caitlin. And I think is a different, I think is a different statement that she's making when she says that or uh, reality is coming in the WNBA. I think she's more so trying to downplay if 
if um if Caitlyn's game is going to translate, even though people say that's not what they're saying, it's kind of what she's insinuating. She's trying to say, oh, she's going to be playing against grown women, you know, women with their heads shaved, all of that, a total tougher, different type of woman. And to me, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. I don't think you could just say that, you know? I don't you can't say what everybody process gonna be. Some people come to the pros and get crazier. There's there's times when guys and women were not as good in college and they got to the pro level and excelled. So just like that's that's another reality. And I, I hate when people try to make their situation or their transition somebody else's transition. Everybody is different. And if anybody's different, Caitlin Clark is different. I don't see her getting to the WNBA and shine away. And because she's going to be on a team that they got to let her go crazy. I think it's an injustice if she doesn't go crazy. Because that's what that, that makes the league bigger if she's a sensation. It's almost like when Wimby came to the league. They were they were putting things in play to make sure Wimby does well because if he does well, the NBA future is secure. If Caitlin Clark comes to Indiana and have a great first year, um, even the monies are gonna change for the WNBA. And you can quote me on that. If she come there and turn up, they're gonna need all new salaries because she's bringing television viewers. And I don't know whoever brought that to the league. I'm not, um, I haven't done my research on that, but she's bringing another thing to the league. Mace, I just said that. I don't know what you're listening to, but I actually just said that a little while ago when I said yeah, the I just TV do that in that the you. end, the transition well, I, well, to I don't speak. know what you're listening to. I didn't. Well, I, I, didn't know I what do you're that in there to. so I, you can speak. That's how you normally. Sure. That's that, that's <laughs> normally how you hand the pass back off, Cam. <laughs> I don't. I don't pass. I don't know. <laughs> you I know this. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody knows, you don't pass. <laughs> It's me. I'm not the guy you have to tell you don't pass. <laughs> I think I know that. Already. I was yeah. being funny. I knew you. I, I, was, yeah. I gave you. The, I, I passed yeah. that to you actually just now. It's that. You think I need to know that it's that by now? Hey man. Thanks yeah, happy. but but yeah. The, but go on top of pause. What Mace just said is that. He's 100% right. Um, things are, are going to get bigger. And this is what I will say to answer your question about Diana Taurasi and the rest of the females at UConn that was hating. Mace is right. Everybody's transition is not the same. Some people are slower. Some people are faster. Some people won't excel at all. Some people will excel quicker than others. But what Caitlin will have that these other females didn't have is the eyeballs on her because women's college basketball, not saying it wasn't big, but she made that shit this year the biggest ever pause. So what you are going to have is eyeballs on you. And I, and like we said uh, in this same segment earlier, I don't think she shies away from moments. I think she wants these type of moments. I think she lives for these type of moments. So no matter what, no matter what the transition is, that has yet to be determined. But I know one thing, the games will be televised. I don't know ESPN2. I don't know CBS, ABC, Fox, NBC. They will be on television. Absolutely. So that's up to her. She has another big moment coming up this year because she's still going to be being watched. And if she does well, like Mace just said with Wimby, it looks good for the WNBA for the next however many seasons. She's 22 years old. Yeah, and this is what they've wanted, Killer. This is more so what I was getting at. This is what the WNBA been trying to get for the longest, trying to get people to watch the games. So if you got somebody who brings at least a million more viewers, 
you got to make sure they do well. That's a part of their business model to make sure that Caitlyn does well. So I don't know what Tarasi is talking about. I, I love Tarasi as a player. But that statement is like an old nigga talking about young niggas rapping. It's, it's just not going to go over well. Unless murder, and I'm not saying that it is going to go over well or not go over well, unless they all get in together hating. This sounds like everybody. This sounds like it, it sounds like everybody was on the group line on the group text. Well, this thing she killing eight. Because her exact words was, you're not you're not gonna be out there playing with 18 year olds and 19 year olds. I'm like, yeah, this is crazy. So I think it's a group text. I think that Diana was the <laughs> spokesperson. I don't think it's just I think they all together waiting to do this girl dirty pause. We're gonna see. And I hope that's not the case. But um, <laughs> and then the last question concerning this topic before we go to break. So we saw All-Star Game, it was the Steph versus Sabrina three-point contest, All-Star 2025. They're looking into making Clay versus Caitlin Clark. Is that a matchup that you guys would like to see? No, because Caitlin might win it. Right now, Caitlin might win it. I'm not going to lie to you. And stat, what happened to the women's empowerment? Women are hating on women? That's I thought that was a black girl thing. I didn't know that, that um, you know, oh, Nella hey. women do that. Um, I don't agree with either of that, but I think, I think they're just being tough on her. Like, it's just like, look, like, but like she, she's not her super humble. Like nobody's trying to, you know, people are just saying things. I don't think it was with any hate or ill intentions at all. Nah, that is where hate is you get the, the undertone was you getting too much attention. <laughs> That's what I picked up. You getting you getting too much attention, you know. Enough with this Caitlin Clark stuff. I shoot the ball too. You know one of them attitudes, killer. I shoot the ball too. Hey man, listen. You know how that should go when you a senior and a freshman come in, you don't even want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> even if they supposed to be all American <laughs> or they the best nigga recruited. No, I don't want to hear all that, man. <laughs> Nigga you know, got proven itself. Yeah, 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 nigga, nigga got to die for this itself. spot. <laughs> nigga want this spot. They gonna have to die. <laughs> nigga, that's how it be, man. When you're a little older and you think that you're better or just as good as somebody, man. But um, the original question was, what's that? Basically, so All Star 2025, they're looking into the three oh, point. Clay, yeah, that's yeah, what it Clay. was. Caitlin. Whole thing about see, this is what I'm trying to say. That's that was good because it was Steph Curry against uh Sabrina, which was great. It was dope. I think my personal opinion, Sabrina may have something to say about who the best shooter is. Sabrina may be like, yo, Caitlin, cool, but I I, I shoot. I, I'm a I'm a sniper, like nigga, I snipe shit. <laughs> Cause she yeah. snipes shit. And she sniped shit in the WNBA. And she was sniping shit in college. Let's not act like she wasn't nice in college. I ain't going to say she was Caitlyn. But listen, she grew up a little bit. That I think I would want to see that before her against Clay. Because, yeah, Mason's right. What if Clay lose, fuck shit up? Got to deal with the woman talking crazy to us. They already talking crazy. Yeah, we be the three-time champion or four-time champion. All that is over. It's over. Yeah, see, Steph wasn't with all that. Yeah. But I'm not against it. If, it. if that's what they're doing, they got a lot of viewership and notoriety, then I'm with it. But I just think that uh, as far as shooters are concerned, I think Sabrina going to have something to say about this shooting shit. I really do. And then as far as the actual matchup, is Clay who you would want to see versus Caitlyn, or is there another player that comes to mind? No, we don't need to see Clay shooting versus anybody right now. Clay has <laughs> got to get his name back, yo. You got to get your name back, Clay. And niggas over here are Clay Thompson fans. You got to get your name back. We don't need you. To, oh, you, you already did what you did at Golden State. We do not need you to get in that All Star weekend and be the first shooter that lose to a woman. Then we're set back. We're set back, Clay. We don't need you to set us back anymore. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm I, still going with Sabrina. Let's, look, <laughs> leave the niggas out of this, man. You girls now, acting Sabrina crazy right will right. beat Clay flat out. Well, I don't even have to <laughs> see it. Sabrina yeah, will yeah, beat yeah. Clay. And yeah, see, that's yeah. sad. Clay, when we got to say this, sometimes mm -hmm. people are like, yo, I can't believe that nigga May said that. I can't believe you making me say this. <laughs> Like, that's the real problem. Y'all putting us in a position to say this. Like, we should never be talking like this. Yeah. Please make it right. <laughs> For real. Because sometimes people are like, oh, them niggas is going crazy. It's like, no. We should never be in a position where now we're talking about can Caitlyn beat Clay in a shootout? That shouldn't be the case right now. But this is what happened. Niggas start playing with you. They gonna keep playing with you until you put your put your put 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 them in a place. That's that. Okay, so we're gonna go to break. When we return, we're gonna talk a little bit more college hoops. But this time, NC State's DJ Burns Jr. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting, got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She tired of hearing, I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall. Oh, oh, dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about she it. wanna be free. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. So tonight, UConn will play Purdue for the national championship. Underdog fantasy has UConn's Tristan Newton at 15 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher. Okay, Cam. I'm going to go with Mace, say higher. Okay, UConn's Cam Spencer is at six and a half first half points do them higher or lower cam make a name is cam gotta go higher man yeah he better have higher pause yeah Man, disrespect the name man yeah cam gonna have more than six okay and then purdue seven foot zach is at 14 rebounds and assists that's your boy mace do you have him higher or lower mace um, I think he's going to be right there at 14, but I'm going to still go higher. I'm going to still go higher. Yeah. It's championship. I'm going to go low. I'm going to go lower. I think Edie is two seasons for him. I ain't like him. Yeah, he was getting dumped on on all shit all last game. He, he did all right. <laughs> niggas was acting crazy on him on Alabama, dunking on the nigga and all that. I'm going lower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 80 gonna be too much for that man. <laughs> okay, download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So previously before the NC State game, in an interview, DJ Burns Jr. was asked his comparison to produce Zach Eady. He said seven inch difference. No diddy. What do y'all think about him saying that in that interview? <laughs> and that being his response. <laughs> 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 that was good. It lets you know that they they're watching us. Also, um, I think he spoke his own demise when he did that, because he put that out there. It kind of showed up in the game, because Edie ended up looking pause too big for him. Although, he said that before the game or after the game. That was before the game, I think. Oh no, I was just asking. I'm, I'm, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off. I oh, no, nah, that was sure that was it. He was, yeah, he he said that. So whenever somebody's saying, yo, the nigga's too tall, the nigga's too this, that already lets you know that the nigga ain't really was prepared. It was already psychological with him. Uh, look. You know what happens uh, after, you know, certain shit for a while becomes culture and not culture. And some shit sticks and some shit leaves. Pause. I don't know. No Diddy may be around in a few more months. No, nigga's going to say no Diddy. It's culture right now. It's like, yeah. remember how he was doing this dance? 
whatever that was, what the nigga, the June bug or whatever the fuck that was. Doing the gang The June bug, <laughs> nigga was doing the June bug. Yeah, was that you know on bottom about, got him? Was that bottom got him? Nah, remember the nigga who looked like Gilly? He had the shit on the June bug like oh, three yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forehead nigga, and everybody was doing it. It was a, it might have been spot. I don't know the song. They played one song behind it the whole time. And nah, everybody that kept was, doing that this was a different one. Spot him, got him. Yeah. Was, was that spot him, got him? Was a different dance, right? Stat. I don't know which dances y'all was referring to. You, you know your film shit. So I know you did it. I know you Listen, did it. I don't I, know. I don't I, know what that is. This was just, this was just two years ago. Junebug <laughs> dance, man. I do not recall. Everybody did it. It wasn't even an age oh, thing. What's that? Oh, no, then. Old the people, one, young the people. The one I know is like the do do that one, nah. but that's that's not the same thing. Junebug. Yeah, everybody why I told was him to do it, it again. He probably I'm was messing the dance. <laughs> I was, yo, I'm telling you, Gilly made it hot, yo. I'm telling you, Gilly made it hot. Oh, I'm yeah, I know it. which way you're talking about. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> now, now you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, how the dance is go, Mona? Jumbo. Mona, how the dance go? I don't know how to do it right. Niggas, was, it wasn't even that much. All he was doing was moving his arms like this. It oh, yeah, the one, yeah, you're right. That's what I'm saying. Nigga, murder was a dancer now. He only wants to show niggas his moves for us. Like, I'm asking him to get in the circle and break dance. <laughs> this nigga, <laughs> this nigga was a dancer, yo. He wasn't the nigga that throw his arms over his legs, over his arms, and then <laughs> and bust his split and then come back. Yeah, he, yeah nah, he wasn't, he wasn't, none, he wasn't one of them niggas, but he know how to get the crowd. Anyway, motherfucking, um, you made me forget the question thing looking for the June bug. I'm pissed right now. Y'all don't know stat don't know the June bug. What's really the question, Stat? No Diddy. Yes. <laughs> Yo, listen, it's culture for a little minute, man. And when it's culture, motherfucker, when it's culture, I found this nigga too. I'm gonna get that song. When it's culture, it goes on for a little while. As far as what Mason just said, him saying it before the game. First of all, pause. He did the right thing saying pause how he wants to say pause. That was correct. Secondly, uh, look, man, if he said that before the game, mm, I don't like it. But to be honest with you, he may have been the most entertaining player um, on Saturday night out of both games. And I don't just mean with the ball, pause. With, without the ball, too, he moves. He said pick. He was very interesting, pause, to watch. Left-handed. Uh, low post game, and you could tell he wasn't really in basketball shape. He like in some football shape. I heard the football NFL and all that is looking at this nigga too. Very agile, very soft touch around the basket. If he's not a senior, I would be looking forward to see him play next year. Um, but they they're gonna definitely have to find somebody bigger. Not saying that everybody's gonna be seven two, but he looks like a great power forward and not a center man. Very agile. I, I like this. Yeah. I like the way that guy's plays, man. Definitely. He remind you, did he remind you of Big Baby? Pause. I think he was a little more skilled than Big Baby. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know because he was left-handed. You know them left-handed niggas be looking. Yeah. And he'd be looking cool with them niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I, I'm not sure, baby. This shit's that. Y'all remember this? Oh, isn't that spot? That is bottom got him, no? Wait, yeah, whatever. Spot him got, it uh, is bottom got him a little bit. Yeah, but that's but the they nigga call who it did the, the June dance. Bug. Like, go ahead, huh? Round, round with foot. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I thought I you were talking you about. Did. I, bet it wasn't you, that. Oh, nigga. I bet you won't. That's what I thought you were talking about. Name is June Bug, man. It's called the June Dad, You don't challenge. even know the dances of your times. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, no, like, this, but this, the way y'all said it, same way I told you. Nah, you this you is frowning your upon us. Because your of, yes, same no, way it takes your frown upon us. You're frowning upon us because we don't know SpongeBob. Now we don't know nothing. <laughs> you didn't say that. Obviously, y'all are hit, but the way it was explained confused me. But I'm caught up. You know, we're all caught up. And so is the audience now. 
Okay, so moving along, got to discuss Bronny James. So we did previously talk about him declaring that he would be transferring, but he also will be declaring for the NBA draft this year while also still, you know, keeping his transfer eligibility. He will work out for and visit NBA teams and make a draft decision based on evaluation. How do you guys feel about him even entering the draft and the decision that he has made? I would I would love to talk to a few um guys that work in the NBA that are like a wave or outside of the the camp that he's a part of, so I could get more of a fair assessment from their from their vantage point. Because from like Cam says, the eyeball test. I mean, he's going to make the league definitely because his dad has said in 2022 that wherever Bronny goes, that's where he will be at, you know? So I think there's some validity to that. And I think anybody's looking into this off season is, is gotta be considering that if we get it, we get LeBron, we, we draft his son. Not only do we get LeBron, but we get a storybook ending you know what i'm saying like no matter where he played at this will be one of those places that will have a lot of fanfare it raises the ticket sales it's so much it's so much money and so much paul's eye candy with just a, a dad being able to play with his son it's something that's never been done i don't think i ever seen that so i know there's people that have played with their brothers there's people that play with their cousins paul's but we we've never seen this. So whatever franchise get to host this event, cause it'll be an event every day. Cause it almost will be like he's playing, but he's coaching his son. He's almost there rooting his son on it. it I mean, the pitches, the pitches alone will be worth a lot of money. So I think him going in the portal is just something to say realistically, but I think him going to the NBA is a foregone conclusion because his draft stock can't get any lower than what it is right now. But I think he, he could do well in the NBA. I don't put that past him as well. I'm just giving the facts about where we are today. Yeah. Um, it's been done not in basketball and baseball. Ken Griffey Jr. and his father played together before, but um, not in basketball. But it has happened in baseball before. Um, look, these are some smart businessmen manipulating the whole system. And um, when I say that, I'm talking about whether it's LeBron James, Bronny James, Rich Paul, Maverick, uh, Savannah, his little brother, whoever else we don't know, UTA. I don't, I don't fucking know. But they manipulate the system to the highest level. And I don't, I don't knock that. This nigga's entering the draft while still staying in the portal. So if the draft don't go right and the right school need a good guard still at this point in the year or whatever point in the year they get to, you have the option to say, oh, no, no, no. Ohio State, like they it cleared out at point guard is good, or Michigan cleared out, or North Carolina do, or whatever. Yeah. You still have that option while still having the option to go to NBA. See, and, and you know, every time we talk about certain shit, it always, I always hate to be like, it, you know, because I used to be that 19 year old, 20 year old nigga, be like, y'all don't want to hear all that shit what niggas used to be doing. But sometimes you got to hear <laughs> some of this shit. <laughs> now I understand where he's coming from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, of course, you had to go through that. That, all right, that ain't really our problem, my nigga. So, when I'm that, with that disclaimer, what I'm saying is when, when I played in the 90s, once you applied to be in the NBA draft, you couldn't go back to college. That yeah. rule changed a few years ago. Well, I don't know, I mean, maybe 10 years ago now. I don't know how many years ago it was. But to the point where even if you get uh, elect to go in the NBA draft and you don't like it, you can go back to school now. Yeah, Ricky Rubio. So, yeah, so you, yeah, Ricky Rubio went back overseas, but now you have the option to go back to school and it's even better because 
you're probably making NIL money anyway. So it ain't like you're not saying you ain't going to make some M's, but you like, I'm making enough to eat anyway. Now, I'm not talking about just Bronny. I'm just talking about the system. Yeah. The system is wild to where, back to Braun and his family and uh, Bronny, the way they manipulate it to the highest level is amazing because a lot of people will say, LeBron's and, and some of the stuff I, I, I probably wouldn't have did LeBron did neither as a player, but I understand as a businessman, you know, LeBron sits there, goes to Miami, uh, delivers two championships. See Ky, Kyrie is doing good. He said, listen, let me go back to Cleveland, get this championship I promised them. In the meantime, let me GM this shit too. I don't want Andrew Wiggins. Give me the Kevin Love nigga. That nigga, yeah. The Kevin Love nigga, I need him with me. So now he's GMing, playing, calling the shots. Now the owner got to kiss his ass because remember LeBron didn't leave on good terms with the owner. So now LeBron got everything in the palm of his hands because the owner, like, that's a miracle this nigga even came back because I told this nigga to kick rocks basically when he left the first time. Delivers the championship, goes to L.A., gets to L.A., opens up a successful sports agency with his right-hand man, opens up a successful production company with his left-hand man, and they're getting mad money all in the family, and now they're manipulating the NBA situation with his son. Look. Yeah. I asked Mace how he knows Spanish. Pause. The nigga said he had the answers on his fingertips. I don't know what you think. I'm mad at that. I'm mad I ain't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and now, <laughs> and now the nigga got now his wife. Not that she needs it at all. Apparent, I mean, obviously, but now she's gonna do the podcast, and he's doing the podcast, so they're gonna also control the narrative. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You cannot control this any better than LeBron James. Say yeah. what you want to, as a as a basketball player. He's not Jordan. Whatever you want to say. Nobody has a better business resume. Maybe Magic Johnson, but not. Yeah. But after LeBron got the lifetime deal with Nike, and yeah. they threw him over the. We don't even know what that deal is. Nigga just said lifetime deal. We don't even yeah. know. I think this nigga business acumen is amazing. And it is okay. So the Sixers sat out Joel Embiid for injury management on his left knee. Uh, the Sixers still won 133 to 126 in double overtime. Tyrese Maxey dropped 52 points. But just in general, is Embiid's injuries becoming more of a concern for you, or do you guys think the Sixers can hold it on their own? Mm. That's a good question. I think both. I think both answers are right. Not one or the other. I think both our answers are right when it comes to his health. His health is definitely of concern. Um, but, you know, some people would say, well, it was their first time they're playing a back-to-back -back game since he's been back, and we're not ready to put that kind of um, rigorous thing on his body. But when you think about it, pause. He, he shouldn't be out there if he's not ready to play. And that's what I was speaking to earlier, that – you're running the risk of hurting them again, and I don't think that's really worth it with the team that they have. It would be better if they let all of them ball out this year and then just come back next year. Their future will be stronger because of that. But if, if everybody's balling and you throw Joel and B back in there, then it's like you're 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 bringing the ball back out of their hands again. So that's that's the the first thing. So I think both of those answers are true that they can ball out without him and it's also definitely imperative that they pay close attention to what they're doing with his health because if he get any way hurt in the least bit you run the risk of, of running another injured Joel Embiid all of next season or at least for a bulk of that season and then you you ran the risk of losing two years that you could have won a championship or at least got to the finals Um. Yeah, sit the nigga out. If he hurts, sit him out. If you want to play, let him play. I'm gonna keep it real. I, I I'm of the mindset of Mason. Is that if this was any other year, 
I would have the same exact mindset that Mace has. He, this is your franchise player. You don't need him hurting the whole next season. Uh, you're you're running the risk of that. All of those things are correct. But how many seasons we giving niggas? Like God damn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many, <laughs> how many <laughs> years is the process? That's, That's what we like need eight, to be at. Like it's like nine years, bro. It's like yeah, eight, this, nine years ago, bro. It started with like, Markel yeah, Fultz. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, we not going to sit here and say, well, we're running the risk. Well, run the risk, man. Yeah, I'm tired of this nigga with the process. <laughs> and, yo, give him one more. Yo, no, nah, run the risk, bro. Run the risk, my nigga. We got to run it. We got to run it. We tired, bro. We can't. So we got to wait all summer, then a whole nother 82 games for you to say, Maybe this might happen again. <laughs> Run the risk for me, but you listen. You are talking at an absolute general manager's mindset. A player looking out for a, a, a coach, a GM, president looking out from the organization, doing what's in the best bet of the organization. That's a hundred percent correct. I'm talking from a Philadelphia fan point of view. Fuck all that. Run the risk. <laughs> I don't got time, yo. I don't got yeah, time fucking next with these be talking about he's <laughs> almost his contract almost up. <laughs> and he need more money, and we ain't seen the process yet, man. Does anybody yeah, know when that. the process ends? <laughs> That's the question. That's the big question. They say trust the process. <laughs> when does the process end? That, that's when can a, we that's collect? Exactly. This this is a this I'm sick of niggas that be like, yo, the joy's in the process. Where is the finished result? Yeah. Dig, 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 come on, my nigga. I'm gonna come, come on, on my nigga for Dal Mori on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna keep it a hundred murdered, but you gotta realize is this, and it may sound funny and it may laugh, and it's not really a joke. The process started stat was 13, B. Yeah. Stat, That's what I'm yeah. saying, man. Like, yo, that was by 12 when the process started, yeah, bro. Stat. Yo, not nah, risk running, bro. Run it, get out stat, there, you bro. You was jumping double dutch still when they were when the process stat just got started. the middle school when the process started. Yo, run you had a lunchbox, that you had a lunchbox <laughs> when the process started. You had a SpongeBob joint. <laughs> so I'm saying, man. Nah, that nigga got a running murder. Nah, yeah, I can't right. keep letting it. No, nah, we can't keep letting it talk about we're running the risk. <laughs> I dig it. Trust me, I dig it. But yo, come on, man. Come on. Is there money it. back on the process? That's what we need yeah. to know. Is there money I, back that, 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 that's, that, that's, that's what I that's when my man says city shit come in. I don't want to make sense. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like making sense right now, Mace. Run it. Yeah, I would love to hear what Sin City got to say about this. Yeah, Sin, if you're nah. watching, let us know what you think about this. Then Sin going to ask, he ain't going to ask nothing about this related. All he going to talk about is why we don't talk more about the Knicks. Now, real quick, Stan, let me ask Mace a couple things. Look, guys, look at Nick in the background. And the Nick in the background talking about we don't talk enough about the Knicks. All right, Nick, you too, you and Sink, because this niggas got mad gripes with us, like we don't know the Knicks history. Mace, let me ask you. I'll ask you the question. I told niggas, and I don't know how you feel about this, Nick. You can shake your head, pause, yes or no, whatever. But niggas act like that the NBA don't want the Knicks to have a good team. It's the fucking mecca, B. Why wouldn't they want them to have a good team? So Sin wants to know, Murder, why haven't the Knicks had a number one pick since 1985, Patrick Ewing? And is that fair? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. You went deep mm -hmm. on pause, yo. <laughs> then that makes sense. Mm -hmm. How they expect us to be good with no number one picks? <laughs> That's what Sin is saying right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sin in the house like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you, you got a point, Sin. Because <laughs> they, they definitely did something funny by giving us the third pick when it came to Ja Moran and, and Zion. I, that's when I knew it was rigged. I'm going to tell you the truth. For me, that's when I checked out. I knew it was rigged. They don't want us to win. 
And wants to yeah, win. He, he mad about that. I'm speaking that for too. Sam right now. This is what he yeah, thinks. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they don't want to person. <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't, yo. Say, don't say I speak up for you. That's exactly how New York Knicks fans feel. They just knew they was getting Zion. And when they didn't get Zion, they just knew they was getting Ja. And then after <laughs> they get Ja, it's like, man. He's the one no Andre Barrett, nigga. <laughs> I don't want no Andre Barrett. Man. No disrespect to Andre Barrett, but RJ, RJ. RJ, yeah. See, I'm messing a nigga name up. Niggas don't want no RJ Barrett, man. Niggas like, yo, what though he's getting though he's getting Zion. I thought he's trading up. And then when you see RJ Barrett and he putting his hat on, he like this, he like, nah, nigga. <laughs> we want his Zion. We thought he was in the Zion sweepstakes, man. <laughs> nigga to take Zion to the right food spots, make sure he stay in shape. Mm-hmm. Niggas need Zion. They still need Zion right now, to this day. It's... Yeah, stay is mad about that. And then, so what's your last point about this? Do you think it's fair and what should be done about it, man? Yeah, I don't think it was fair. I think, I think, I don't know, because you're right. The the NBA does better when New York, Miami, and L.A. is playing well. When there's a California team in the NBA or Dallas or, you know, New York or Miami, one of those hot markets, it just, the NBA is just a better league. It's a better yeah, league. That's what I say. So what do you think should fix it? Because it's lottery balls pause that you know, even if you they would the give niggas record. they would give niggas the, the the lottery this year. Let's say not that they could, but I'm saying they would this would be the year they give the Knicks the lottery when it ain't nobody niggas really want. You know what I'm saying? Niggas end up with Edie or something like that. Niggas would be like, Oh, we got Edie. Oh, we got Edie. That's all we needed was a solid pick, man. <laughs> like, niggas always want to give New York the best of the worst, man. I remember we got Kenny Skywalker. I was, I was tight, bro. Yeah, yeah, I hated like, Kenny yo, Skywalker. Like, yo, why we ain't get Rex mess. Chapman, man? Yeah, Kenny Skywalker was stink, pause. <laughs> yeah, niggas, nigga niggas thought they killed him when he won the dunk contest. Oh, now nah, y'all seen Sky? I ain't calling that nigga nah, Sky, man. man. And then, listen, last thing I'll ask you and stat this. This is more New York Knicks shit since we don't get New York Knicks on the show. Let me ask y'all right now, not overall career, mm-hmm. not what they've done for their whole career, just this season. Yeah. New York Knicks fans and others believe that Jalen Brunson is the best point guard in the NBA right now. I'll tell y'all what I said after I hear you guys' opinion. Is Jalen Brunson the best point, point guard, guard in the NBA, NBA right now? No, today. absolutely not. What? Absolutely not. Who, Who you got? Sin, this is Sin. This is New York Knicks questions. You just had 40. You just had 40. You just had 43. On Brunson is last dead night. nice. Brunson is dead nice, but I don't have him above Steph. I don't have him above SGA. This season, Murder, remember we talking about this season. Yeah, this season. Yeah. We're talking okay. this season. I don't yeah. have him above okay. SGA. Oh, I don't have him above Steph. And yeah. you know, I don't I don't really put nobody above Kyrie Killer. I don't care what they yeah. do. Yeah, Kyrie had 48 last night. Yes. Yeah, so Kyrie went crazy. I got him Kyrie right after crazy. that. I got him right after that. Yeah, it's hard to put some money in front of Kyrie because Kyrie been so quiet that, that we almost forgetting about. Yeah, he nice just ain't getting in no trouble. He's still getting yeah. buckets. When they was talking crazy about Brunson, talking about how crazy he was playing, Kyrie was almost identical. It's just he wasn't in the papers and he was in Dallas. Yep, and not only that, the garden sheds a different light on you as well. That yeah. Who do you believe is the best point guards in the NBA right now? 
best point guards right now. Is Jalen is Jalen Brunson the best point guard for New York Knicks? No, and it's no. not even aiding. Like he's playing well, but I don't think anybody agrees with that except Knicks fans. <laughs> it's like that sense of delusion that you're in. Shout out to y'all, but it's the truth. Like nobody's saying that. He's not look, in no look at, yo, for look, that. Yo, Yo, look in Nick's face. <laughs> Nick just lost all love for you. Y'all know, man. it's the truth. He <laughs> just lost all the love for you in that one moment. New York niggas right now, but they fool it. Yeah, yeah, what does she like know? That. What does she know? Who is she? Yeah, she doesn't know ball. But now they got to discredit you. Who is she? Yeah. What does she know? Well, right. who, who do you got at the top of the list, Stat, for your, your guard, point guards right. in the NBA right, right now, now? Probably SGA. And then, like, honestly... I mean, Luca, but it's like the Mavs are okay right now. Yeah, I put SGA one right now, right now. So yeah. who after SGA? Um, I'm thinking like I'm leaning towards Luca because I still think he's great, but there's plenty of Luka other people plays that plays point. Yeah, yeah Luca the point. He's 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 second for me. I got Luca second. I got SGA first. I got Luca second. I got uh. Steph third, Kyrie fourth, and then I got Jalen Brunson. But just to clarify, you know, though, this seed like because when you say Steph third, people be like, oh, but we're talking about this season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Steph overall don't even ask questions about overall, but this yeah. season just what he's doing by himself. And and to be honest with you, I may trade that order and put Jalen in front of Steph just for this season. I may put Jalen fourth and Steph fifth because. Steph is carrying the golden No, no, no. I'm just looking at overall. Steph is carrying his team, no doubt. That's not a doubt. But it ain't like it ain't his niggas. It ain't a new bunch of niggas. Y'all, he, you knew your personnel. You know these niggas. Y'all want championships to get together. Jalen Brunson, to be totally honest with you, three, three of the Knicks starting five have been hurt majority of the season. They get OG. OG gets hurt soon as he get there. He just coming back. Now we find out Julius Randle is out for the rest of the season. Um, the son of Mitchell been out since December. That's three. And then it was somebody else who went out. They, they have four starting five out of starting five out. And majority of the time, three of the starting five out. And Jalen Brunson is still getting the win. Still, get, still got him in the fourth, fifth seed um, without the usual uh, personnel that he was used to last year. And plus with additional trades, so on and so forth. So where he has the Knicks this season compared to where Steph has Golden State this season, I'm going to put him above Steph right now for this season. So That's Steph, the only reason. So Steph would be fifth on your list. Today as we stand. Yeah. All okay. time, I'm just, I'm just talking about today. Yeah, just now this look, season. Yeah, yeah just, just this season. Now look. We don't know what's going to happen. The playoffs come. Everything, you know, is different. Yeah, it could be man. back in the same order mm -hmm. we thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah ex exactly. It's different. Things could sports, change. Baby. Absolutely. I'm just telling you at right today where the season stands at today with four games left in the season. Mm -hmm. But, but um, yeah, uh, I just think that uh, that we do forget about Kyrie a lot, man. And he's he's because he's not in the news or on TV, the game he had last night was sensational. Um, and thanks for bringing him up, Mace, because I'm not saying I wasn't going to bring him up, but he we got to stop acting like Kyrie and Kyrie, man. He's the best show on earth when he want to be. Also, shout out R.J. Barrett because he caught a crazy stray earlier, and I hope he's, you know, doing better with the loss of his brother. So shout out to him. I don't know him personally, but I just felt like, dang, like, if I was R.J. Barrett. Oh, I ain't know he lost know. his brother. Oh, no yeah, disrespect. We, we, we know all of that. We know all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, blessings to the family. Prayers yeah. with the family. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely. You're right. No disrespect. God, yeah. Throw me under yeah. the bus, stat. I wasn't throwing you on the bus, but I would probably remember be like, dang, what I do? Like, you do nothing. <laughs> nah, but on some G shit, they have murder back. Not like that, because I really don't want to have his back. But he ain't lying. That's what New yeah. York niggas is like. New York, yeah. and no disrespect, because I know you're going through something personal. 
But he, listen, when niggas got Porzingis, New York niggas like, fuck is this old big tall ass nigga? Yeah. Fuck it, yo, who the fuck is this nigga? Yeah, New I York know. niggas don't know. They don't know. And remember, I'm speaking for the New York people. I'm not speaking for me. I'm speaking for New York. They ain't even my team. Yeah. But shout out to man. RJ. And yeah, I'm, I'm just saying New well. York, that, that wasn't personal towards him because they yeah. are rude. If they, if they don't know you, know you, like you said, Zion or somebody, they don't want to hear that shit. Who the fuck is this until further notice? Yeah, until you prove different. Well, they thought they was getting Zion. Okay. Well, y'all, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys all for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, two big necks, like when they doing them two for five.